Good morning, everybody. Oh, come on. Good morning, church. There it is. Is everybody ready to praise God this morning? I'll just open this up in prayer real quick. Father God, we just thank you for today. Jesus, we thank you for another day that we can come before you and just worship you with all that we are, God. And we come into this place saying, Lord, you are worthy of all our praises. Jesus, it's not just for what you do that we worship you. It's for who you are. So, Jesus, we just fix our eyes on you. We just glorify you with these songs, God, even in this, these 30, 40 minutes that we just come before you and worship you, John. We say, Lord, have your way in us. As we worship you fully, God, may you move in this place, Holy Spirit. So we glorify you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. And there is one born for our salvation, Jesus. There is a light in the hope kingdom that forever reigns. There is freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the seas, who stands in the fire.
declare there's a name. There is a name. A call in times of trouble. There is a song that comforts in the night. There is a voice that calms the storm that rages. He is Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the sea. He stands in the fire beside me.
name we sing Jesus is your Messiah you must say there is power in your name God you're my rock and my redeemer there is power in your name just declare him now your Messiah my Savior there is power Worship you, Jesus. Name above all names. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. Because you are the
church let now the church shine as your bride that you saw in your heart as you offered up your life let now the
the heavens we declare that you are our king that's why we sing we love you Our hearts are burning for you, God. And even with these songs, God, we love on you today. Jesus, we love, love, love you. These songs are never enough, God. So may we continue to glorify you even throughout our service, God. Holy Spirit, have your way today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to try it again because there's a lot of y'all. Good morning, church. Good morning. And so as a reminder that while I am doing tithes and offerings, please, oh, while I am doing announcements, please get your tithes and offerings ready. We do have a couple today, so we'll try to get through them as soon as we, as fast as we can. The first one is always going to be the same. Just as a reminder, we do still have upper room prayer going on Monday through Friday, one at noon to 12.30 and then one at 7.30 to 8. So if you guys can tune in, um, message us on Facebook for the link, or if you already have the link, share it around. We are still doing it, amen. And so we just want to keep this going. And we also do still have corporate prayer as well on Wednesdays, 7.30 to 9. We also have Friday Live at 7 o'clock. Doors open at 7 o'clock, and then we still have that Sunday Sunday corporate prayer from 9 to 9.30. So we do have a lot of opportunities to come and fellowship and pray, so I definitely do encourage you guys to take those opportunities. Next one, please. So like I said earlier, Friday Live. Woo! Come on. Huh? All right.
right, so we are about to end our second series on Friday. Amen? Come on now, that's like 14, no, my math's not right. Like 16 weeks, 18 weeks that we've been doing Friday Life, and we are still going strong. So as a reminder, this Friday we are doing our last to our last video for this specific series. Doors do open at 7 o'clock and dinner is served at 7.15. Um, so if you guys can make it, even though you haven't gone to the other ones, come to this one. It's still really, really great. And uh, just as a reminder, we are doing The Bait of Saving by John Revere. So please, please, please invite your friends, invite your families. It's just a nice way for all of us to come together in fellowship. Amen? All right, next one, please. So, uh, raise your hand if you sent a design. Yay. I'm gonna, yay, woo! <laughs> well, we wanna thank everyone who, saved, who gave us t-shirts as the designs for the retreat that we have later this year. They are, there's no, you don't give us any more designs because we already have them. So, our voting does start today. If you haven't seen, whenever you came into the church, we do have a table that has all the t-shirt designs that, we, that was submitted that you can vote on. There will be a sheet like this and another sheet on the table that you will place your votes on for the shirt. Majority wins. So if you vote for a shirt, make sure you put the number of what shirt you voted for next to your name. And parents, you lucky people, you get multiple votes because you have multiple kids. Yay. So please, please, please vote. Everyone gets one vote. Repeat after me. One vote. Okay, all right, and like I said, thank you for whoever um, sent in designs. If you win, you get free retreat, amen? Yeah. Amen, next one, please. So that just ties in with retreat. Remember, it is October 7th through 9th. Mark your calendars. It is a couple months away from today, so you guys got time to request off, adjust your schedules and stuff like that. The theme is back to basics, and it will still be at Forest Glen campsite. So if you guys have any questions, please, please, please let us know. Either ask around or DM us on Facebook for those who are online. And registration starts next month in August. So mark your calendars. Next one, please. So we do actually have an event today. It is going to be Bound for Life Prayer and Worship. Um, it's just celebrating, I believe, the, the Roe versus Wade. Is that what it's called? Yeah, so it's going to be at the Planned Parenthood in, on Gulf Freeway. It's going to happen today at 6 p.m. So it's today, 6 p.m. So if you guys do want to come, the address up the, is up there. Screenshot it, whatnot, whatnot. Let's celebrate a victory. Amen? Amen. Next one, please. So say, woo-woo, if you a lady. There was a lot of guys who said that, but okay. Uh, so if you are a PCC woman or young lady, we do have a Boodle Fellowship for you guys next Sunday after service. So you don't got to spend money for your food. 12.30 at Philip and Yana. If you guys do want the, the address, please text, I believe, Tita Gina or ask Tita Gina or ask Tita Bidet or ask at the Jemmy or at the Tita Gemma. Lots of people you can ask. It is going to be after Sunday service, not during, after Sunday service. So if you are women only, men, women only, okay, okay. And then afterwards, we do have a baby sprinkle, baby sprinkle for Atta Lachelle. She's not here, but Atta Lachelle. So if you are a woman, we want to celebrate her giving or her about to give birth. So please mark your calendars for next week. Next one, please. And another safe thing, we got a lot of safe dates. August 7th, we do have another guest speaker. It's gonna be Pastor Wendy Borrego. So if you guys wanna mark your calendar for that or invite your friends and families, definitely do. It will be just a normal Sunday service, but with a guest speaker. Next one, please. And Everse, Everse is happening this Wednesday, woo! Come on, I know it's a lot, but we still gotta be excited. So Immerse Prayer is happening, to, not today, on Wednesday, July 27th from 7.30 to 9.30 here at PCC. We do encourage you guys to come. Nothing is more powerful than a church coming together and praying. Amen? So we are giving us, they're giving us the opportunity to come in prayer, so I definitely encourage everyone to come. Like I said, it's going to be Wednesday here at church at 7.30. Next one. Cleaning crew! Woo! All right, this is the last one, and it is the best one, in my opinion, cleaning crew. So if you see your last name on there, you know the deal. You are scheduled to clean this week. So 
I say it every time I do announcements. I know every last name up there. So if I see y'all leave, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you guys. So please, please, please remember that it is not a burden, but a blessing to clean our church. And if you aren't out there and you still, if you, the Holy Spirit is moving you to clean, by all means, grab a broom. Grab a vacuum. By all means. We're not just secluding it to the people on that list. Amen? We all want to clean, yes? Yes. All right. Um, that is all of the announcements. Thank you for bearing with me. It was a lot. All the announcements will be on the Facebook page if you missed any. But I would love to pray for our tithes and offerings. Lord Jesus, we just lift these tithes and offerings to you, Lord, because you are worthy, Lord. Because we love you like we said in the song, Lord Jesus. You are the only one worthy, Lord. And we just thank you for giving us the opportunity to even give tithes, Lord. For giving us the opportunity to be here and fellowship and learn more about you, Lord. So we just lift you up. We lift our speaker up this morning. And we thank you for the message that you have for us in store. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Hello world, do you see me? So hidden, I am here, waiting for the rest of my life to unfold. Soon, I will arrive, and life as I know it will change. I will experience hunger and no contentment. I will feel pain and pleasure. I will make mistakes and overcome them. I will fall in love. And someday, I will also bring new life into the world. Or will I? It's really not up to me. My entire life is before me. If only it is allowed to continue. Be my champion in the fight for my life. Look at those faces. Are they happy? You can tell if the person is happy. Look at the eye of the person. And you will know exactly. Especially with your wife. If, just, if you just hurt your wife, it will show in the eye. <laughs> look at the eyes of your wife. Now look, look, look. See? The, that means he's mad. <laughs> Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. Welcome, church. Oh, we have some uh, friends of us who visited us this morning. Sister, who is that good-looking guy beside you? Your sister, yes. That's your spouse. Yes, that's her spouse, her husband. Oh, welcome back, brother. So, no, I, I was. I thought it was brother Anthony because you are sitting in the front. You used to sit at the back. Praise God. That's promotion, brother. I like that. You promoted yourself, sitting at the front. You want promotion? Come closer. Praise God. Don't be shy, sister. She's yeah. Praise God. Welcome back. Imagine how, how long did you, did you drive? 45 minutes from where? Crosby. Crosby? Wow, that's a far place. So they're here. Welcome. So those who are complete. So those who are close and still late, look at this guy there. Those who live close by and still late, look at that brother. <laughs> Coming from Crosby, praise God. Wonderful Jesus. Uh, that's the, the grandma of Logan, right, sister? Yeah, Logan's, I know Logan's more than you now. <laughs> Welcome, sister. That's the grandma of Logan. Where's Dennis? Working. 
You know, Dennis is a block builder, by the way. Don't mess, mess with <laughs> Praise Jesus. Wow, wonderful Lord. This is the church. This is family. Remember, church is the family. So feel comfortable, okay? Let's stand up and just greet each other. Yeah, just wave your hand and just say hello. Yeah, stand up and just say hello, okay? Praise God. Hello. Hi, God bless you. Praise God. Hi. You may be seated. Praise Jesus. And the reason why I, I just ask you to stand up and say hello because uh, some are not very comfortable touching other people yet. But sooner it will be very easy. Okay. Uh, every Wednesday, every Friday we have this uh, service we call Friday Night Live. Friday Night Live. And we have different materials that we utilize every now and then. And for the past five Fridays, we've been using this material called the Bait of Satan. Bait of Satan. When my wife first heard about, about it, she said, why are we going to study about Satan's bait? And then after learning about it, she said, this is the best. And so we would like to hear some of the people who, who were so blessed by this uh, material. Uh, uh, let me call on uh, Brother Lee. Are you here, Brother Lee? Oh, come here, Brother Lee. <laughs> Brother Lee will be sharing something about her experience, uh, his experience. Thank you, Pastor. Let's go quickly. Raise your hand if you attended any one of those sessions. Raise your hand. So you look around you. I would say about half of this group has attended. So you probably can relate. This is probably the most practical, life-changing, reminding uh, sessions that I've ever had in many, many years. Because the bait of Satan is really about taking offense. Right? It's not so, you know, this deep esoteric things that you might believe. It's about if your wife wrongs you, your husband wrongs you, your boss or your spouse, your neighbor, and how do you deal with that? Right? And to me, somebody's always going to wrong you, regardless if it's going to be in the traffic, they cut you off. Somebody's going to wrong you because of misunderstanding, and a lot of people carry that grudge and carry that unforgiveness and carry that hatred. I know wars are created that way because of these being offended. And he said it in one of, I think it was session one, actually. Why is the people that you are the closest to, like your spouse or your family member, when they wrong you, you take the greatest offense? So it really is something that you can live practically. So I really think this, for me, is a reminder. Jesus told us about, you know, forgive the other people seven times seven. But the way this uh, John Bevere, is that, is that his name? He said not only is a pastor, but he's an author. But the way he tells those stories is so practical. How he forgave his ex-wife who ran off with his senior pastor and he still forgave them. I mean, that was crazy. His wife ran off with your senior pastor and then later on he gave them jobs. And he told about that story about that. So just just amazing amount of forgiveness and amount of that. So highly encourage you to come. I'm excited about what the next session is going to be. Uh, again, for practical benefit, is we can fellowship together. It's a small, intimate setting. We have prep, uh, we have dinner, and then we watch the videos. Only 30 minutes, so short, and then we can share, right, and share your own perspective, share your insights. So to me, that's very powerful. <laughs> That is Brother Lee. That is Brother Lee's version. How about from the younger people? But, uh, uh, I would like to call on uh, Austin. All right. Uh, I think Brother Lee summarized it very well. So I'm just here to bring you a challenge. Come on. So, you think you know everything, huh? You think there's nothing more to learn? Well, that was, my, that was me uh, when I 
first come to the first week of this Friday life, thinking it's just going to be like another Bible study where one person preaches for 30 minutes, and then you pray, and then you go. But no, you all get to share your mind. <laughs> you all get to speak what you're thinking. You get to share, you get to sharpen iron. And <clears throat> I think that's the best uh, part of it. It's when you discuss with each other your uh, perspectives about what you learned. So if you have work, we all have work. So we, and we still come. So what's the excuse? You got kids? Bring your kids. Yeah. People yeah. bring their kids here. Yeah. You have no ride? Call someone up. Come on. <laughs> We're all willing to bring you to church to learn more. Because, you know, everything will fade away. You can stay where you are, or you can grow uh, your relationship with Christ, which will last forever. Thank you. Think Austin kind of talk? You're wrong. <laughs> he got it from his dad. <laughs> no offense. <see? laughs> okay. Are you are you ready for the word this morning? Okay, we're ready. I would like to call on our speaker this morning. Would you come forward? Did you hear that voice? He said, that's my dad. <laughs> Would you stretch your hands towards Brother Marco, please? Praise God. Father, this is someone's dad. <laughs> this is someone's spouse. But you have chosen him this morning for the very purpose of making him your mouthpiece. Father, I pray for a mighty, overflowing anointing to be upon my brother. God, to entrust you this moment, his life that you're going to use him mightily for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello? Good morning. Joshua, thank you for your support. I know, Becca, you were screaming from the inside. So I almost... Uh, did not come up here. I, uh, I kind of wanted to give my time to Austin because that was amazing. So you got something in you, bro? And you know, sometimes the things that you think you can't do, that's how God would use you. Um, this is not part of the, uh, the sermon, but I don't like talking to people. Actually, the less they talk, the more I like them. Because uh, I, mean, I just don't. I'm not, I'm not very social. But the thing that God would do in your life, you just, you know, it just shows you that he can do things through you. And it's not your ability, but it's him working through you. So I'm speaking here in front of you. Uh, is a testament of what God can do to you. So um, I hope that you ate your breakfast this morning. You had your coffee and everything, because we're going to be here a while. Uh, so I got pages upon pages. <laughs> yeah. Some of you are thinking I should have stayed home and did the uh, live stream, right? No. Um, so uh, before I start, there are just three things that I wanted to, uh, a favor that I need to ask you. Uh, um, and this is related to, to the topic that we're discussing today, and I'm not going to be able to preach unless you did them, okay? So can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you to all stand up. 
I want you to all stand up and you can go ahead and grab your things. So if you came here with your Bible, with your purses, your backpacks, your suitcases, whatever, uh, take them with you. And I want you to look around the room. All right? I want you to look at those faces. If you don't recognize them, or you've seen them around, but you don't know their name, never said hi to them, I'm going to ask you to, hold on, is to go to them, introduce yourself, and all of that. Number two, you're going to be sitting next to that person for the rest of the service. And number three, I'm going to ask you all to move forward. Now, if you have kids, small babies, that's okay. You can stay in the back. But if you don't, come forward so we can occupy this. And this is important because we're going to do something later on. All right? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Ready? Go. Somebody you don't know, okay? <laughs> Okay, you may be seated. So if you are sitting with your friend, it doesn't work, okay? <laughs> it has to be somebody that either you don't know or you haven't really spoken to. So, move around. Okay. All right, so. Good. All right. So, there is a point to, to this exercise. But, but before we do that, um, I've always wanted to, to bless someone. So um, the Lord has been putting in my hands, my heart to, to bless someone every time I come up here, whether that's you know, a small uh, amount of blessing. Um, but the one that I'm going to give today is huge. Just in the words of... Uh, Jonathan, it's uh, BHM. <laughs> Big, huge, massive. All right, so you want that? All right, so I want you to take your Bibles out. So whether that is your actual Bible or your electronic Bible, and I'm assuming you have all your Bibles today. If you don't, we, we will have a deliverance uh, prayer later on, um, and you can come. All right, so if this text that, that we're discussing today is highlighted in your Bible, so I want you to come up here. So the first one to come will win the prize, okay? But if you share my last name, you cannot play. All right, you ready? Okay, so Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. All right, you there? Yes. Okay. Verse 9 to 12. 
All right, Carla. Oh, wow. Okay, good. All right. So your prize is I get to take you out to lunch for free on me. All right. So we'll, we'll talk about the details later on. <laughs> and now you want to raise your hand. <laughs> I didn't realize that in the electronic Bible, uh -huh. the NLT was highlighted, but I had two people in <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at the person next to you. Okay? Or the person behind you, person in front of you, if there is one. All right. So you are going to be spending eternity with that person. Yeah. That may be scary to some of you, okay? But you are going to spend eternity with that person. And it would, wouldn't it be sad that if you get to heaven one day and then somebody taps you, hey, uh, Sister Leia. And then you're like, hey, sister. Is that you? You don't remember me? This is uh, Jemmy from PCC. And you're like, Sir Jemmy. Well, hang on. You went to PCC? Wouldn't it be sad that you don't even know the person next to you? You know, we, especially here in the United States, we value individualism. Right? It's more about independence, our rights and our you know, self-made attitude, that we are uh, self-taught pianists, self-taught guitarists, self-made millionaire, and all of those things. But no matter how unique or independent we think we may be, there is always a part of us that simply wants to be part of something more, right? Um, we want to be close to some people, and we can't help it. That's just human nature. Uh, we were created by God for relationship, and it's in our DNA. So the relationship first is vertical, which is a relationship that individually we should have with our creator. So that's where we derive our identity. Uh, we know whom we belong, we know our image, we know our, our value and our worth because the Word of God says so. And that's the relationship that we should treasure the most. And there is that vertical, uh, horizontal relationship that we have with each other, which in reality is just an overflow of the vertical. That whatever we have received from God we are able to give. And uh, we can only give what we have received. The reason why you can't give love is because you don't have that love relationship with the Father. The reason why you can't have compassion, the reason why you can't forgive is that there is no relationship that is flowing from the Creator out towards others. And uh, the world view of relationship is devoid of, of the vertical. Uh, it is most often than not self-centered and it is focused mainly on what you can get and not what you can impart. And sad to say that the church itself has kind of adopted that, that uh, viewpoint that we are so focused on what we can receive and not really on the blessing that we can impart to others. Um, you know, you probably have heard the, the word consumerism. And that's sometimes have become of the church is that we are just consumers. We are here to take, to take. We congregate every Sunday 
without having a genuine relationship with each other. And the church is not a collection of strangers. Uh, the fellowship that we have is, is divine and it has a purpose and it's deeper than you know, what the world defines. Um, and God has created us to, to work together so that we can proclaim the good news of Jesus everywhere we go. And uh, we are created not only for fellowship, but we are created for partnership. Uh, that's how we're made. So in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, we'll start with verse 9. It says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Verse 11, also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And we have seen that throughout the Bible. When Jesus um, sent out the disciples to minister, he sent them out two by two. Um, Moses had Aaron, uh, Paul had Silas, and it is just not limited to two people, but there is a point uh, to why God made us that way, is that so that we can have fellowship with each other and we can have partnership. And this uh, passage illustrates that. And there are four things that I just wanted to, uh, to share with you um, why it's important uh, for us to have the fellowship and the partnership. In verse 9 it says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. So the first point is for division of labor and for greater productivity. So uh, you remember, I don't know if you remember when you were a kid, there was this math problem that says, if Bong can paint a house for 12 hours and 30 minutes, and Lee could paint it for nine hours and 25, how long will it take them if they paint the house together? All right? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not good at math. But the point is that we are to partner with each other so that there will be greater productivity. Um, two individuals or a host of individuals will bring different uh, skill sets in the table and each complement each other. Uh, same way with the church, the, we are not all the same. Um, the blessings, the uh, talents that we have complement each other. Um, that's why we have music ministers, that's why we have teachers, that's why we have uh, people that can fix things, is that we all have a part to play. And, and as we divide those things, then we are more productive. Um, you know, I could sing. Well, you don't want me to sing uh, because you would be blessed uh, beyond your imagination if I do. But that's why we do have different offices. Is uh, the Word of God says that we are one body, but many parts, and we all have a part to play. So, so we fellowship and we partner so that we can have division of labor and greater productivity. The second one is that we could have a support system and accountability. So when we stumble in our spiritual walk, or we are just um, overwhelmed by things uh, in this world, you know, it is vital that we have a friend, that we have a mentor that uh, could come alongside and help us uh, be restored to our relationship with God. Um, also, it, it uh, keeps us accountable 
when you have a person that can tell you and speak truth towards you. Because uh, sometimes we, we do get caught up in ourselves that we don't know that we are already doing something that is not right. And having that person come to you and say, hey, you're doing it wrong, you need to go back, then that is really important. The third one is that it is a source of our love and encouragement. It says there in verse 11, also if we lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? So we are here so that we can express love and encouragement towards each other, not, not hate, not criticism, to show compassion towards others. And sometimes the church can be the source of hate, can be the source of criticism, uh, which shouldn't be. It is a place that we can be free to be ourselves, regardless of where you've come from, what your experiences may have been, uh, what your strengths and what your uh, weaknesses. And um, we are created for that. Um, if there's a place where we should find those things, it should be in here and not outside. And the fourth one is that for protection and for, uh, for covering and strength. Uh, it says there in verse 12, that though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So we ought to protect each other from the attacks of the enemy and also from the attacks within. And we know that, that when there is a strife, there's division, there's conflict. Sometimes, uh, instead of protecting the brother, protecting the sister, we add fuel to the fire and make it worse. Um, and we also have to cover for each other, to cover everyone in prayer. Um, and also if there are some situations that require some sensitivity that we ought to cover um, our brother's faults and not let it get out and have people talk about them. Um, supply what they, they uh, need for unity. Um, needing other people uh, in our lives doesn't make us weak. Um, show strength um, that we can, we can ask someone to come alongside and help us. Uh, we need other people in our lives. Uh, we need a group. We need a community um, to belong to uh, in order to grow. Uh, we cannot grow just on our own. Um, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 20, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. So the people that you choose to surround yourself, the community that you wanted to belong to, will affect your life in ways that you can't imagine. So we can't help that the people that surround us would influence us the most. And, um, you know, I, I see patients in their homes, and um, sometimes I would go into a patient's house, and they're cooking breakfast, bacon, right? And as soon as they get out, in the car, I smell, smell bacon, right? You go to the next one, they're smoking cigarette. But, so you come out of the house, you smell like your cigarette. And sometimes some other stuff that are not really allowed, <laughs> and you can smell it. But at the end of the day, you got all sorts of scent that you, you don't even know what you smell like. And, and the same goes with us. It rubs, the people around you rubs on you. And you may not be aware of it, but their belief system, 
uh, you know, the way they handle things, the way they, they do their life, affects you, right? So before you know it, you, you're doing the same things with them, going to the same places, listening to the same music, doing the same activities, because they rub on you. There's influence, just like uh, Paul said that uh, bad company corrupts good character. There's a small amount of yeast, it will work through the whole. And the same goes with the people that we surround ourselves with. The question is, you know, where do we draw that support? Um, the best place for that is the church community. Uh, you can never find it anywhere else. Um, the alternative is the worldview. But the only way that we can experience genuine uh, relationship is within the church. And um, it's not perfect. It will never be perfect. But it is still the best alternative for us to grow. Um, and you may say, well, that's just not me. You know, that's my personality. It's just I'm a loner. I'm quiet. I don't really, you know, socialize. You know, if there is a, if there is a person, if there is a foster child for being a loner and quiet, that would be me. Because uh, like what I said, I don't like talking to people. Some people, they get offended if you don't say hello to them, right? It's like, I'm not going to go to church because they never said hello to me. But me is the opposite. I can just sit there. If you don't talk to me, great. Great. It's like, it, it doesn't bother me that you don't uh, say hi or anything else. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. But here's the thing that the Lord has shown me over the years is that it may have been the church's responsibility to make me feel at home initially, but to integrate myself and be a part of the body is my responsibility. It's not theirs. It's not the church. So after a few years, the Lord has shown me a lot of things that uh, made me think the way I act. And, and the way I was able to involve myself in, in, in ministry um, just goes to show you what he can do if you let him uh, do the work in you. Um, you know, I'm still not very sociable, but, but I'm good talking to people now. Uh, it's okay. I mean, when somebody walks in, I could talk to them. Uh, I do not ignore them. Um, and um, usually, you know, after church, I, uh, you know, I would, I would talk to Bong, I would talk to Lee, to John, because that's that's my default. They're the closest to me, and it's it's okay. But over the years, the Lord has shown me. To, um, to talk to other people. And it's kind of scary, but, but God has shown me a lot of things. And, you know, they probably have noticed that during Sundays I barely talk to them anymore. Uh, it's just because the, the Lord has shown me something that is, is more important um, to be able to be a part of, of the church and to be able to, um, to show them grace, to show them love um, that I wasn't able to before. Um, and, and just talking to some of the, uh, the other people here in the church and hearing their testimony just you know, made me realize you know, how gracious God is. And you know, some of the stories that I have heard, some of the testimonies that I have heard, some of the transformation that have happened in their lives, it's just, wow, it's just amazing. Only if you took the time uh, to uh, be with those people. I remember um, 
going to Bible studies, and uh, I was going to go to somebody else's house, but uh, I don't know anybody there, but I think about that and, and um, Arnell. And, you know, I think uh, Julie and uh, the Salvadors were there. So I was thinking, man, how am I going to talk to these people? Salvadors, they don't talk. I just like, man, I'm going to have to use sign language to communicate with them. But, but lo and behold, once we're in that small group, wow, it's just like, who are these people? I mean, Sister Julie, I mean, she's got a great sense of humor. It's just like, I can't even imagine uh, that they were like that. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show you the, you know, sometimes we, we uh, put in a facade, okay, as to who we are. But if we get to know the person, then we would know who they are. Um, and we'll find out that they do have issues. They do have struggles like we do. And, and that, you know, we can be uh, one with each other. And, uh, you know, sometimes you may feel that, well, you know, I don't want to get hurt. In my old church, I, I got hurt multiple times, and I just don't want to get close anymore. Um, but you are going to get hurt. That's for sure. And in all likelihood, you're probably going to hurt some other people as well. I'm going to tell you a story. Um, earlier in the church, um, I was leading a Bible study group, and I was young. I was immature. But there is this couple in our group that they were habitually late. And if you know me and in time, I mean, I just, I just don't like late people. <laughs> I mean, I was just raised that way. You know, the, you know, the meeting is at 10. And to me, it means the meeting is starting. It's not like pulling up from the parking garage, right? So I practice this at 10. 10 that means everybody's here playing by 10, not, not pulling up uh, at that time. So they were like that. And uh, that kind of annoyed me. Like I said, I was young. Um, so one time, I made a joke uh, as they were coming in to Bible study. And uh, so it went on until I did not realize that I offended them until the following morning. Very early in the morning, she called me. The wife called me. She said, brother, if you think that we are a burden to your group, we're going to leave. I was like, oh. And I was like, what have I done? And pastor's going to kill me. But um, thank God for the conviction that I was... Uh, I realized that I, I made a mistake. And so I asked her for forgiveness. I asked the husband. I talked to the husband and asked for forgiveness. It's the thing, though, the following week, Bible studies at their place. <laughs> Good one, bro. <laughs> So it was at their place. And I remember, I, I would never forget this because uh, she was standing outside her door. So I was, as I was walking in, she came up to me and just put her arms around me. Right? She didn't say a word. She just kind of hugged me for a few seconds. She didn't have to say a word to tell me that she had forgiven me. And praise God for people like that that just like what we've learned, we've been learning that they did not take offense, but was quickly to forgive. You know, we, we ended up being close to, to those uh, couple, and uh, it made the relationship stronger, although, you know, there were some not so good things that I did, but you're going to get hurt. In the church, you're going to get hurt. And if you're looking for a perfect one, uh, you're not going to find one. Good luck. Um, you're looking for perfect people. 
You're not going to find one. Look in the mirror and you're not either. All right? That's just the way it is. So, but even through the hurt, even through the pain, the offense, it is uh, giving us an opportunity to grow in love, to grow in grace, to grow in, in forgiveness. And many times, you know, Bong and I and Andy, um, we've been friends for a long time, that we were, we have dealt with issues in the church wherein we were on opposite sides of, you know, of the spectrum. And, and praise God that we were able to work through all those things. And, and still um, have that relationship and actually have um, bonded us a lot closer. Because, you know, Bon can tell me straightforward if I'm doing wrong and it's, I'm not going to be offended by that because I know he has the best interest, my best interest uh, in his heart. And the same goes with Andy and some of the other people here. Uh, but we do have an opportunity to be like that. Um, you know, let us not be apathetic um, towards others. Um, let us take the time um, to get to know them because uh, that's where we are going to draw uh, all our strength uh, if we're going to make it through this life. Um, Hebrews chapter 10. So I'm almost ending. So I'm going to have the uh, worship team come up here. Uh, I got a few things to say, and then we will do something at the end. All right, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. Does that, and let us not, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day, see the day approaching. So we need Christian friends. We need everyone for emotional support practical support, for spiritual support um, as we go through the hardship uh, in this life. And the more we nurture relationship, the more we can get out of it. Right? Uh, just like the closest friends that you have, you would not think twice to ask them for help. You would not think twice um, to give them your house key your car key, or whatever it may be, or your deepest secret, because you know you're protected, because you know that there's genuine love and compassion and care from that person. But you cannot do that with someone you just met or don't want to take the time to get to know. So, so God's people are not meant to live in isolation, but to walk this road together, and we need each other. Um, we need to do life together. You know, in the earliest days, Christians, they worship at the temple together every single day, every single day, all right? And you're just sitting that next to that person for an hour or so, all right? Eternity, you're going to see them for eternity. And if you are annoyed by them, Right now, and imagine if it's eternity, it will be, it will be crazy. All right. So, um, so church is not a building that we congregate to, or we congregate in once a week. We are a collection of individuals linked by God together, so that we can function and do a divine purpose. There is a purpose while you're here. Uh, you're just not a member, you are a part of the body, okay? So um, as we worship, I want you to all stand up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an opportunity to, uh, to pray and to bless that person next to you. If you have forgotten their name, you can ask again, it's okay. Okay. Uh, 
Here's what I want you to try to do first as we worship. I want you to take your time and, and ask the Holy Spirit on what to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit on what to pray. He will reveal it to you. As the Word of God says, ask and it will be given to you. And the Word of God says that we have the mind of Christ. So as we minister to that person, God will show you. You know, don't wait for the clouds to open and say, Boom, pray this, right? You know, God will tell you. So pray for each other. So we're going to take our time. We're going to take our time, right? So as we worship, let's go ahead and do that. Like a 
together in love our way. Combine us together in love. We declare it. Combine us together in love our way. Combine us together in love. Combine us together in love our way. Find us together in love. Bind us together in love while we wait. Bind us together in love. We will, we will watch. We will pray. We will wait for that day. Dance our lips. For this soul, hearts are burning. Bridegroom, Lord, and we will watch, we will pray, we will wait for that day and starlit. Holy soul, our hearts are burning. Bridegroom, Lord, we say we are, but we are the church. Bride. Love makes us strong to lay down our lives. Sing, we are the church. We are the church. We are the bride. Love makes us strong to lay down. Bind us together in love while we wait. Bind us together in love. Bind us together in love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Church. We're grateful for what we heard this morning. Amen. 
But okay, yeah, you can clap if you want. Now let me ask you this thing: What is the atmosphere now? Now, before we start it, what is the atmosphere of the church now compared when we started? Was there any changes? Yes. Now listen, church. We would like to create in the church an atmosphere that is different from the world. When we say atmosphere, there are many layers of atmosphere, isn't it? There's the troposphere and there's the ionosphere. Do you know if it is, have you noticed this when you go to the Philippines? And if it is shaky, the pilot tend to fly higher, right? Because up there, the atmosphere is totally different compared here below. Did you notice that? There are different layers of atmosphere. And what you did this morning is this. You just created an atmosphere of warmth in the church this morning. And it should be like that. And it should remain like that. We can go back to that lower level of atmosphere. Or you want to be here in this level. There's another level. There's another and even higher level. And we are to create an atmosphere that is of warmth. And people can feel it. You yourself said it's a different atmosphere this morning. How did it happen? You created that atmosphere, beloved. We are here to make a difference. And how? You know already. But first thing is this. You have to determine the atmosphere. If it is, it goes down, or it's there, or there, or up there. You have to determine. If we are going down, then that's the time to say, Lord, what can I do to make a difference in your church? Because this atmosphere attracts the world. The reason why some people don't go back to the church again because they say, I don't like the atmosphere in the church. And then why they keep on coming because I like the atmosphere in the church. So church, let's create an atmosphere of love in the church. When you do that, you will be surprised. So imagine, this coming Sunday, the moment you get in and you feel like it's kind of cold here. You have to change the thermostat. Change the control. And make it warm. If it's so cold. How? How are you, brother? How are you, sister? Mean it from the bottom of your heart. Because they know if you're faking it. Right, bud? You can give people hug. They know if you really mean it. Or you're just, you just want it to hug. And you can do that because the love of Christ is resident here. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's rejoice. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, it's not really that hard to create an atmosphere of war in your body because it's not really you. It's you through us. It's the Holy Spirit through us. It's the love of God through us. If you are filled with that love, it overflows. We cannot control. We cannot contain. Father, we bless the church. Thank you, God, for what you shared for your precious child. In Jesus' name. God bless you, folks. God bless us. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come but there is one born for our salvation